hi and welcome to this video in which we're going to teach you how to use the MRDC reporting toolkit and the purpose of this toolkit is to get figures from tables like this into reports that perhaps look something like this. Now there's two parts to this process and some background information that's worth having. The reporting toolkit works within uh, Microsoft Excel. We do have plans to have it working within Google Sheets in the future. But at the moment, if you want to use Google Sheets and Google Slides, you can just export this data into Google and it will work absolutely fine. But all the work you do, you do in Excel. So let's just take a look at how we're going to get those figures in those tables we first looked at into this report. Now, I'm going to work mainly in Excel, but just to say that if you want to do anything in PowerPoint, you can do that as well. And you can link through to PowerPoint. And likewise, with Google Sheets, you can output to Google Sheets and Google Slides. Now, this tool works with anyone who has an MRDCO license or a QPSMR license. Uh, and it would also work with anybody who can output figures in the same format that MRDCL and QPSMR does. So if you have software where you can choose how you output figures, you'll be able to use this toolkit as well. So let's look at the process of how we get those figures out of those tables that we looked at originally. There they are and how we get them into the reports. Now, I'm going to come back to how you get the figures in MRD and, C and QPSMR because they're slightly different, the approaches that you take uh, later in the video. I'm going to look at the part where we've got these figures already and uh, how we get them into the report so that they're automatically updated. And if you were to run these tables again, you could auto up, up, automatically update them again. Or, for example, if you had a number of reports on different filters, perhaps one for each country, how you could just run it uh, several times and produce a number of Excel or PowerPoint reports or indeed Google Sheets or Google Slide reports. So let's have a quick look at these tables just to get a familiar, familiar, familiarize ourselves with them. Um, we've got table one here, which is favorite brand. Then we come down to table 2A, which is opinion of brand 101. That continues through tables 2B, 2C for brands 101, 103, 104, 105. And then we've got a top two box for each of the seven brands. There they are. So there's the top two figures. And then we've got a summary of mean scores for those brands. And what we're going to do is um, put those figures into uh, our report. So let's look at our report. That's what that's that's the data that we've got here. And let's now switch back to the report. And you can see the report's quite a simple one. It's all in one sheet on this occasion, but it could be in several sheets. Um, the presentation, if you were putting it into PowerPoint, would all be in one presentation. So in this uh, Excel uh, worksheet here that's called report, we've got some figures here that are being picked up for the favorite brands. Uh, split by north, south, east and west, which is a banner point on those tables that we had just now. Down here, we've got the rating of brand 101. Up here, we've uh, we've got the mean scores from that table of mean scores we saw and the top two box analysis here. Now in here also, we pulled in dynamically some figures. So we've got 40% um, of your customers are satisfied. So that's coming through dynamically from the data and in here it says that it's based on 40 respondents and again we want that to dynamically update uh, if we ran this again on 80 respondents we'd want that to show 80 rather than 40 and the percentage up here to change accordingly now what we have to do is to tell the reporting toolkit where we're getting these figures from and where they are uh, got to go into these reports now the first thing to, to say is that these charts are just standard Excel charts. Uh, there's nothing unusual about them. They can be linked through to PowerPoint, so they would update a PowerPoint presentation as well. And also you could update figures as well from this tool. So the process really is sort of, sort of step by step. The first step is, well, all the steps in the process would be to calculate the figures you need for your reports 
to specify what figures you want because you probably don't want all of them you just want some of them to specify the tables and charts that you want and then if you want to link them to Google Sheets or to PowerPoint or something like that to link them through to there so what I've done on this particular case is I've set up my charts and what I might have done here I might have um, done these in advance with some random figures so I've got my tables and charts all set up here in Excel with some random figures and that's something that's quite easy to do now one thing about the reporting toolkit it differentiates between percentages and figures because often you only want percentages in uh, your reports but sometimes you also want figures and it treats for the for in this in this particular case mean scores it treats as figures so you, you could argue that mean scores are neither figures or percentages but uh, just mean scores but for the, in the for the purposes of the toolkit it will treat mean scores as figures and what I've got here and this is the way that we recommend you work with a toolkit is that you set up a worksheet which is perhaps called, if the report's called report, that you call it report data F for, for figures and report data P for percentages. So these figures here, these mean scores would be coming from the figures page and the percentages, which I think everything else on this page here, except these figures we're dynamically pulling in, would come from the um, percentages page. So let's see where these figures come from. Well, what, what's, what I've done here is I've linked these charts here to figures in the underscore F and underscore P sheets of my uh, report. So if I was setting this up, I might go into here and these are actually the real figures. But what someone quite often does when they're pre preparing these presentations is to just perhaps use the function. The one I quite like here is rand between um, I'll just type that wrong. Let's just type it in properly. Rand between one and a hundred, and that will give me some random data which we can replace later on. So, if you haven't got your data ready yet, you might well do this. You'll ask for some random data, and we can just copy that cell here into all these cells they won't add the percentages won't make sense of course because they won't add to 100 percent but at this stage for test purposes it means you can set up your presentation and if we go to the figures these are um, not quite the same so we want to just paste this in here we want one to a hundred uh, divided by a hundred maybe i'll make that Five hundred divided by a hundred. Okay, and that gives me a sort of a credible mean score. So now I can actually, I could, if I didn't have my data, I could quite easily set up the charts using these random figures. And if I were to go into the report now, you'll see that the figures are quite different, uh, where it's just pulling in random data. They're slightly nonsensical because the percentages don't add to a hundred, and this chart is actually just rounding them to a hundred. But for now, that's good enough, because what we're going to do is we're going to tell Reporting Toolkit where to get those figures from in my tables so that it can automatically update them. Now, I'm going to draw your attention also here to two other things. These figures here are dynamically pulled in. And if we want to pull them in dynamically, we need to give them some unique text string. Again, you can use your own text string. You could put my percentage in there. We recommend you use percentage one percentage in each of these boxes so that it dynamically pulls those in and then we can replace that percentage one with percentage with the figure that we're trying to pull through from the reports. So in a sense, we've got everything prepared in terms of what we want as output. Now we've got some random figures feeding these charts. What we need to do now is to tell either MRDCL or QPSMR, what figures we actually want to pull in from those tables. So how do we do that? Well, there's a number of tools within the toolkit which you can activate. And what you need to do to tell MRDCL and QPSMR where the figures come from, we'll worry about the actual setting up of the tables themselves in a moment 
you need to tell uh, MRDCL where, or QPS where these figures come from. So it's all very well having these figures at the moment, which are just random figures coming out in these sales and linking them through to report. But we need um, we need uh, a QPS or MRDCL to put those figures in the right place so that when we pull them in or load them in, uh, they're going to they're going to work. Now we do this by building or making a builder sheet, as we call it, within the toolkit. And the way you make a builder sheet is to activate the uh, form that lets you carry out all the operations that are possible. Now the way you do that is you just double click on any cell in Excel. So if I double click here it's going to ask me what I want to do and you can see um, that uh, there's a number of things that come up here some of them are blocked out at the moment because they uh, it doesn't think this is a builder sheet but all of the other things are available so let's have a little look at what all these things do here well the first thing I want to do really is to prepare a builder sheet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on prepare builder sheet and it'll, it'll pull up a new form for me. And it's a new builder sheet. And it's going to ask me how many rows and columns I want to be active within that sheet to have data that I'm going to push through to my uh, reports or my charts that I've got. It defaults to 50 by 50. In this particular case, looking at the sheet below it, actually it's only using up to about column 18 or 19 and across to about the 15th or 16th column. So 50 is actually fine. Um, I'm going to leave that as a, as a default because I've got used to using that. And I'm going to call this uh, report build underscore F for the, for, the, uh, for the figures. So we click on this and I'm going to copy it on from report data F and if I click OK now, and I've left that checkbox there saying insert headings, and you'll see why in a minute. It should have made that for me. And what I'll do, I'll get now is a worksheet called Report Build F. It's just building that for me. And here is, if I just go to it, here is Report build F. Now this looks exactly like what we had just now except you can see around it it's put the rows and the columns across the top. Please don't tamper with those it's really important to the system that it has those rows and columns all labelled up for me. So now I've got a sheet called report build F which is just basically a copy of what we had just now but with the uh, rows and columns if you like around it at the top and down the side. Now I'm going to tell uh, the, 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 the system where these figures com, come from. Now it doesn't know this is a builder sheet yet, so I need to double click here and add or remove a builder sheet. So I need to add one and I'm going to add report build F and I'm telling it it's linked to report data F. So this is just telling it where it's connection is it came from report data F click OK and now it will let me do some more things so if we look at this here now I can now click on this cell here or and you'll see these two things up activated at the top and I can start to specify where this data comes from because the builder sheet is going to tell the toolkit where the data comes from now if I go back to my tables this came from table four and north came from column one. So north, so these are the five rows and these are the four columns of data that we want in our report. So let's specify a table and I want it to come from table four, row one, column one. And you can see what it's done. It's dropped, if you like, the syntax in there for me so that um, I can use that in uh, my definitions when it comes to read from MRDCL or QPSMR. Now I want to expand that to the other cells. They're sequential rows and columns, so it's very easy. So all I've got to do is expand this now to this cell here, which is 019. So let's just double click on here, expand that. I want to expand it to 019. It's consecutive rows, so it steps up by one at a time. 
it steps up here by one at a time. I know I want to overwrite, uh, overwrite rather the dummy figures that are in there at the moment, so I can check that box. If I want a warning, I can have that, but I don't want it. I might have typed zero in there. I think I meant, oh, sorry about that. On we go. And you can see what it's done now is it's put in the cell addresses for each of those cells. Now, it's got this text around the outside of it still. Now, I don't want that. So now I can just strip off that text. I can say remove texts from Builder Sheet. I'm talking about report build F. And it's going to go through and just quickly strip off any texts that are not relevant to the specifications for MRDCL and QPSMR. So it's doing that now. And sure enough, I'm just left with that in those cells. So if I want to retrieve those texts for any reason, I can just say retrieve texts, choose the sheet. And I want to get them from report data F. OK, OK to proceed. And you can see now I've got the text back. So that if I wanted to, I could just um, um, look at what I've got here and edit it accordingly. If perhaps if I pick the wrong table, I might want to just check how it's all laid out. Um, let's just take them back off again. So let's just remove those texts. And now we should have hopefully a clean worksheet with just the definitions in it. Good. There it is. Um, and we do the same, of course, the percentages. We could do the same with that. We can, um, if we go to our sheet we're working on here, the percentage one, we could make a builder sheet for that as well. Replace these cells from where they come and everything would work absolutely fine. Now, this has already been done. So if, if we go to test underscore, if this has actually got exactly what we've got here already prepared, and you can see test underscore P has been prepared in the same way. It tells it where to get the figures that are in those cells with all the columns and rows marked up. So I'm going to go now and just double click on this again once more, and I'm going to remove that builder sheet that I just put in there as a builder sheet because we've already got it set up in test F and test P and they're actually linked through to the data in here. So that's how I'm doing the linkage. So really I'm just specifying where each of these figures come from. The only other thing that I've got to do to make sure that everything is updated is I need to specify how these shapes get their text. So you remember we've got percentage one in here and percentage one in there. It needn't be percentage one. You can use any unique string. I'd be careful with letters. Uh, percentage one percentage tends to be fairly unique. So it's just a recommended way because what it's going to do is substitute um, that percentage one percentage with whatever it finds in the tables. And the way we deal with the shapes is slightly differently. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the uh, shapes sheet and you can see here that you can specify what all the shapes are that we're linking. So for example, let's start with the first one in the work in the Excel worksheet report. We want a shape called satisfied. We want to replace percentage one percentage with what's in table three, row one, column zero, and we want the percentage. And obviously you can type these in uh, using this. You need to be careful to make sure you've got them uh, correctly specified and that everything's there. So you haven't got to use this method. There is another way of doing it. You can just double click here and you could, for example, go into the add remove text and shape. So if I wanted to, I could say I want in my Excel workbook, I want to add in the Rashid report and then I've got to pick the shape. Now, understanding shapes is quite useful to understand. Way, the way that Excel works, it gives a name to each of these shapes. Now, you may not know this normally. Often it just gives them a name that you wouldn't know. If you don't know this, the Alt F10 key will show you 
the names of all the shapes. So if I highlight this one, you can see I've called this shape satisfied and I've called this shape respondents, whereas this shape here is just chart two and that's chart five and this is chart four and uh, this one doesn't appear to have a name. So this one here, for example, I've, I've renamed it. You can rename these easily enough. You can just double click on it and give it a name of your own choice. So it knows that I've called this one satisfied. So when I go into my shapes worksheet, I can just add a new connection. I can say that I want to add a connection in the sheet report to the shape satisfied. And I want to take it from table three, row one, column zero, an item of percentage one, and I want a percentage. And if I click OK to that, you'll see it's just dropped in here as though I typed it in. So this is just basically a friendly interface that you can use again by the double click uh, and it will add it to it. You don't actually need to be in that sheet to do it. You could be over here and you can add a shape just in the same way as I did just now. I was only in that sheet so that you could see it happening. I'm going to go back and remove it. So if I want to remove it, I can click OK. It's an Excel removal and it's that last one that I've just put in and click OK. And now you can see it's deleted from the list. And similarly, I can upset, I, I can upset, I can make links to PowerPoint. So if I've got a PowerPoint workbook where I've got a shape in it that I want to update. So if we quickly go here, you'll see I've got a workbook called example presentation dot pptx. I can open that up. And in here, hasn't got very much in it, but if I had something in here, let's say we want to update that figure, I might put percentage one percentage in here. So this is the chart that's linked directly to the chart in Excel. This is a figure that we're pulling through percentage one percentage. Let's just save that. And close it. And now we've got that linked already uh, in here saying that the shape called brand 101. Again, I renamed that using out F10 and picking it. I can pick from table 2A and I want the percentage in there. And if I wanted to put a new shape in for PowerPoint, uh, I can just double click anywhere again in any sheet, add a new shape, pick PowerPoint, click add browse and find the file I want. So that's got the file I want. Tell it what slide I want. And then it'll go, if you click on find shapes, it'll find the shapes that are available. This takes us a little while because it's connecting through to PowerPoint here. And if I click on the drop down, you can see I've got brand 101. And I could say that's table 2A, row 1 column one, percentage one percentage, and I want the percentage in there, click OK. And it's built that connection then through, which in fact I've already got. So it, it'll, it'll just try and do it twice. And once again, I'm gonna remove that shape connection because it's already there. PowerPoint remove, uh, pick that. It tells me what that connection is. Click OK and delete it. And I'm back now to the connection that I had. So everything is pretty much connected up now. It, both data or blocks of tables that I want to pull in from QPS or MRDCL. And uh, also uh, any shapes that I want to update any text dynamically uh, that are on shapes that are there. So that's done the bulk of the work for us. Um, let's just quickly look at any other options here. Um, there's one here where we're going to load data. We're going to do that at the end in a minute. Um, we've got add and remove builder sheet we looked at. You also have the ability to view and hide the builder sheets. That's just in case that you want somebody else to work on the project so that they can't see the builder sheets or feel tempted to tamper with them because if they get their connections between the data 
and the builder sheet uh, confused, they would the, the, the runs wouldn't obviously work or the updates wouldn't work. So that's an option just to hide it so that people can't actually touch that. All right, I'm now going to go on to look at getting tables. Now this is where, if you like, the uh, introduction to the toolkit sort of splits in two directions. It will depend whether you're using MRDCL or QPSMR. So I'm going to start with QPSMR and then we're going to look at MRDCL, perhaps not in as much depth as we might because MRDCL users are obviously usually very uh, competent at using MRDCL and can produce whatever figures they want to without perhaps the same effort as you can in, MR, in, in QPSMR. Um, so let's look at doing the tables in QPSMR. Now, with QPSMR, it's important to do the tables um, in a way that works for QPSMR and getting the figures out. Now, because QPSMR is just a subset of what you can do in MRDCL, QPSMR doesn't actually produce the figures in the form that we need to get these into the uh, reports that we need. So what we have to do is build an add-in to uh, QPSMR that will get the figures out in the form we want. And just to bring that to life, what we're working towards here is rather than having our tables looking like this, what we want behind the scenes is just the figures that we need reported into a report file in um, from uh, both QPS or MRDCL. So if I open up what we're looking to produce here, So these are the figures that we need. And so what it's got here, if you can imagine this, these are the percentage figures. And further down, we've got the, the, um, uh, the actual figures, the mean scores in that case. And then we've got these odd figures in the shapes that we're pulling in, which are stored down here. Now, these are all indexed automatically by the toolkit, so it knows where they are and knows where to put them. But we need both MRDCL and QPS to put these out in the right places for us so that when they're in, when we load them in in a minute, it will automatically update our presentation for us. So if we just use QPS for that, it wouldn't output that report for me or that CSV, for that report CSV exactly as I want it. It would just produce the tables and it would mean we haven't really got a linkage from the tables to our report templates that we've designed. So let's go into here and look at this. So it depends what sort of tables you want. The way you're going to use this is to use this spreadsheet to specify your tables and then tell QPS where the spreadsheet is and it will automatically produce your tables for you. And we'll see that in a minute and we'll see how to implement that. So the tables here are quite simple. This says I want a table from the question called brands by the question called regions. Now it might be helpful at this time to open up the QDF associated with this project. So uh, let me just do that. So I'm going to open that up. You could use companion here or Classic, I'm using Classic. So here's my project. You can see I've got uh, region, brands, brands 101 to 107, and a variable I've made called brands top two. So the first table I'm gonna get here is brands by region. And I've got nothing else across here. So this is just gonna give me a simple cross tab using uh, just, you know, just the same as you would do in um, uh, if you used QPS tables. Now I've got something slightly different. I've got brand by region and I've got a block 101 to 105. And so what that's going to do, it's going to produce a table called 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D and 2E for brand underscore 101 to brand underscore 105. So in other words, for each of these first five brands here, it's going to make a table for me, a separate table uh, by region across the top. Then it's going to use that variable brands top two by region. That's a standard cross tab. Then it's going to do brands 101 to 105 as a mean score summary using the scale five to one. So what that means is it's going to pick each of these brands here and do me a summary table of mean scores 
using a score of five down to one. And we that five down to one has been specified here as the name five to one, five, four, three, two, one, and U, meaning undefined for not stated. And then finally, we've got brands 101 to 105 in a grid summary so that we get um, a summary of them. I don't think we're actually doing a chart on that, but if we might, we might want it a, a summary chart of the, um, of the brand side by side. So this can be added to, we can add or you can build in other types of tables that are more complicated or automated. You can even use this uh, technique with um, uh, QPS as a, anyway, rather than just using it with the MRDC reporting toolkit. So now let's go back to our QDF and let's open up the tables. And you can see that all it's got in it is one table or one instruction. And it's not a it's not a normal table. It's using uh, MRDCL syntax. You would have put that in by CL syntax. And all it's calling is insert report toolkit underscore QPSMR.STP. So what you're going to use is something you get with the toolkit. You're going to get just this STP file. And that's all you need to do because that is going to give you exactly what you need from the tables. And if I run these, it's going to read that workbook effectively or that worksheet with our table specifications in and go ahead and make the tables. So it's just running that now. And there's our tables. But it's actually done more than produce those tables for us that we wanted and we specified. It actually has uh, listed them out into that report CSV file that I showed you earlier so that uh, all your uh, figures can be loaded into the reports. OK, we finished with running, MRD, uh, running QPSMR now uh, and we will be ready to load those figures in. So let's just do just that and then we'll quickly look at MRDCL and producing the same figures. So let's double click on it again. Let's go to our report so we can see it dynamically update. Let's double click. Let's load that data. Let's browse for it. There's the figures that we want. It's the report CSV. And now we click OK. And now it's going to link through all the figures that we wanted. Copy them into our report and we should have now a report with the latest figures appearing in our report. So it's just getting those figures for me. And if I click OK, there's a message there saying it's got something on the clipboard. That's just Excel rather than anything else. And we can go back to our report. And now you can see it updating all those charts. And you can see what's in. We've got the 40% here. We've got nine respondents here. And you can see here now we've got the mean scores coming through rather than the random figures. And it looks as though we've got the uh, figures coming through. I think actually I should have expected 40 there. Maybe I picked up the wrong figure from the wrong table uh, to go into my report there. But you can see that's all dynamically linked through. And if we go to the PowerPoint presentation now, that also should be updated. Let's just open that up because we had a link in there. And we just got to open that up. And our chart now should be updated. And you can see it's pulled through that figure nine into there, uh, which was on the other report. And so it looks as though we've got everything updating in here too. So that's really how the linkage works. You run your tables, you load in what it is that you, you want to run and everything will come through automatically. Now, just quickly, I wanted to talk about what MRDCL users uh, do. It's slightly different from them. It's a little bit more in their own hands. Um, although we do have 
a template that does everything for you. Now, as I said with the QPS, you do need what's going to happen. What's happening with QPS without probably a QPS user realizing it. It's actually making two tables for every one table, one with the figures, one with percentages so that you can access the figures or the percentages to drop straight into your report. You need to do the same thing with uh, MRDCL. I'm not going to go through this in great detail here because uh, this is really something that MRDCL users will uh, understand and want to customize. But you can see here that we set at the top how many tables there are. We tell it to open up the uh, reporting toolkit and then everything is pretty much automated. This is some script which will automate the tables in MRDCL, but of course MRDCL users might want to customize that so that it does something slightly different um, and, and, and they could obviously do far cleverer automation than perhaps you could do in QPS without building an extra tool into the uh, table specifier. So that's just a very brief introduction to MRDCL, but the principle is the same. You would run your tables calling this toolkit uh, file, which is available and um, load the data again and your report will update in the same way as it did for the QPS run. And if you've got multiple runs in three countries, all you've got to do is put a filter into those tables so that they're, they're globally filtered and run the tables again. And then you can just load the data from the first one, run it again, load the data from the second one. And amazingly, you've got three or four reports very, very quickly uh, with the with the PowerPoints or the Excel reports that you want. So this tool is good for uh, Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets and Google Slides. Uh, it's, this has been a sort of brief introduction. We do plan to add more tools to it as time goes on. If you've got any ideas, feel, feel, feel free to let us know and we'll try and uh, uh, include them in uh, the second and third versions which are already being planned at the moment. Thank you. Thank you.